All right, for this uh, quick tutorial, a little shorter this time, um, we're going to talk about conceptual mass and divide repeat, which is an amazing little command that allows us to do a lot. So uh, we're going to start by opening the generic um, pipe that you had done before. You can go back through open and find it wherever you saved it or just open it by clicking it here. But now once this is done, we're actually going to go file new conceptual mass. So we're going to open up a conceptual mass also. For some reason it has you do this. I think it's silly since it's usually the only option. Um, so this is a similar world. There's a lot of, of some of the same commands, but this is what's kind of weird about this Revit modeling these families is that a lot of these families have kind of a different modeling logic. And that will come more into play as we open up more of them. So you'll see how this works. So what we're going to do is um, I want to look at the difference between some of these lines. So we're going to look at, um, let's say, uh, spline through points, you know, ellipses, um, these different arcs, um, and how we control them versus, let's say, spline through um, smooth spline. So I want to start by just looking at what happens if I uh, draw a reference line. It's going to start off. Escape, escape. Because I was on that work plane, you see that I drew it on that work plane. If I just click on that work plane, reference line, click, click, I'm on that work plane. I can also get SW. Now I selected that work plane, reference line. I do it in each one of those, correct? So we can select the work plane to begin with by just tapping on it in these ones, and it moves it to it, or we can um, actually use the SW. Now, um, what's interesting with the, with the splines, say I'm in this vertical one, um, we can get a pretty good escape, escape control with this. What's interesting is I can also do control, drag, and it copies something. So let's see how this just copy that work plane. It means I can also go um, another spline. Notice I'm still on the original one, even though I copied the one where I'm going to SW, select that one, and now I'm going to go one, two, three, let's say. Okay. So notice how one of them is a purple color. So this one is a reference line. This one not a reference line. Now it is a reference line. I want them to be reference lines. Okay, because we want to be able to control this stuff. Notice this was the control point, so I can still control this line. So I just pulled it out of that plane. Although we use the plane to draw it, I'm now able to come back in, grab this, and do whatever I want with these lines. Okay, so that was a way of giving us an ability to begin um, begin in a plane but then move them out of a plane. Let's say, in comparison, I'm going to grab this plane again, and I'm going to do, um, uh, let's say, this spline creating smooth arcs. So one, two, three, sure. escape, escape. Okay, I'm going to make the reference line again also. But this is the tough thing here is that it's not creating points for me to use from, so I can't, I can move it around by moving it in that same plan. Okay. I can't move it out of the plane like I did the spline through points. Spline through points gave me points that I can then control where spline, just plain spline, is just this mathematical, actually, Euclidean geometry, right? It's all defined by certain things. Okay, so I'm not going to be using that one. I'm using these because we want to control points. Now, Let's go back. So I want you to I keep my left hand, like I said, escape, escape on my pinky or my index. I want you to do control tab. We instantly jump to the next frame. When you hit a whole bunch of these, you just want to be able to control tab to jump between them. I want you to get in the habit of that. When I'm on this file, I have this thing over here, load in the project. Now, although we don't have a project here, it automatically jumped. It said, hey, you want it to go into this world, right? If I just click anywhere, one, two, I'm now setting the pipe anywhere in this world from those two things. Once it's been brought in here, even if I delete that one, it's now in the families. So this is where if I open up, we have a generic model. Oh, here's my, a little bigger. 
made it a little too small. There we go. You see the generic model pipe. I can just drag that in and drop it again. This was interesting. I can actually grab it and drop it from there to there. I just attached it onto this these tracks. Um, really interesting way here. This is so, but I just kind of picked two random points, right? It's, it's not really straight. If I grab it and I hit control, I can actually repeat and slide it on here. That's pretty cool. But there's no real control in that, right? I kind of just picked two arbitrary points and then I just, in essence, copy dragged it. It's just like almost an illustrator and you like, grab something and drag it. All right, so that's one way. And it was just, it's tracking on those lines. It knows that this thing is hosted on those two lines. But I'm going to, um, easy, easy, easy. Delete all that. I'm going to say, I want to have a little more control on that. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab both at the same time. And I'm going to hit divide path up here. Okay. So now all of a sudden, I've got these little nodes. These are different. Okay. What this is, is this is a skin over this line with these control points. So if I select that, I'm not actually selecting the line. I'm selecting this skin, which is the divided path. And right now, this divided path says 6. I can write 12. I can write whatever I want, and that number changes, right? I can actually I'm grab onto this, I can hit that number there, and just 14, and it changes. But now I want you to also notice something. This has one of those little squares next to it. I want to make this a parameter. So I'm going to call this uh, number points. Again, I'm going to leave it a type. Okay? Okay. What does that allow me to do? I can grab this one and say, I want this to also be a number of points. Now, if I come through and I change number of points to seven, it changes both of them. I'm gonna go back and say 10. Okay, now let's bring that generic pipe in again. And now all of a sudden, I typically don't go to the end one because the end one sometimes grabs the actual adaptive point for the line. I'm just going to start at this first one in and the first one in. Escape, escape. Now, you could go and tediously lock onto each one of these one at a time, but there's this great little command here. If I touch this one now, because it was on those points, it knows it's hosted not on the line, it's hosted on that skin of the divided path. So when I grab that, there's this little button up here that's called repeat. All of a sudden now, it knows the logic of this. I can even come back in and say, well, I want this parameter to be six. It goes to six, 20, it goes to 20. What's also nice, I'm gonna sweep grab that thing. It adapts to it. It adapts to it, okay? So we've just made one component and it knows how to deal with this logic. So, um, we're gonna do something else now too. You notice that the pipe came into generic model adaptive, okay? Although we did have, you know, we have the control tab to go back and forth between these two, you also have the ability that if you tab in, I can just grab one of these, if you ever just double click on one, it automatically opens the file that it's in. That's really nice where sometimes you have a complex thing with a whole bunch of families, double clicking on the one actually gets into the other. Now, what I want to see is right now, this is a generic uh, family, but we can actually change. You now, this was the family types. So we can actually change what category this is. Because it started as a generic model, we can actually turn it into anything. Let's say it's structural. Yeah, we're going to say it's structural connections. Um, okay. So now when we bring it in, if I just say save, if I load into project again, I want to override existing. Now all of a sudden, there's no longer, it's not in generic model, it's actually a structural component. This becomes really nice later because when we bring this into the project files, it's no longer a generic model that might not be seen in some of the views, but a structural connection is seen in, in any of those views. So all of a sudden being able to use this in um, section drawings and you know in, in any type of um, views within Revit. So now there's something else we're going to do. 
Um, we are going to look at a different way of playing with this. I am going to grab all these and go to HH and just hide that. No, so then, um, I'm actually going to delete them. I'm going to delete all of them. I'm actually going to delete the divided surface and just go back to when we just had the two splines, right? So you notice because I, I didn't delete the line, I deleted the skin of the divided surface on the line. I'm going to grab these two things right here. See them too. And I hit create surface. It automatically creates surface between these two. Okay. Now I'm going to now grab the surface. Sometimes it's hard to grab the surface because if I grab this edge, it's grabbing the line. But if I grab where there's actually an arc anywhere, it grabs it pretty easily. If I'm over on this side, I can you know, tab through the line, the object. There's the surface. You know, some groups hitting in the middle sometimes doesn't do it, but that does it pretty quick. Now, like when we divided the line, I can also divide the surface. Now, all of a sudden, we've got a pattern on this. The same way we can control the pattern that we want. Let's say I want it six, five, four. Okay, now we've got a much simpler pattern, right? Okay, there's lots of different ways we're going to be using this pattern. But again, this is just a, a logic laid over the surface. The surface isn't gone. We're just seeing a certain attribute of it. So if I grab this, I can actually go back in and say, well, right now, the surface is just being seen as this. I can come in, and there's this little arrow here. Whenever you see a little arrow on these, it means there's callouts. I want to see the nodes, OK? All right, well, now with the nodes, all of a sudden, nodes just like we had on the uh, uh, on the line, we can use those nodes to connect to. So I'm going to just make a single point down at the center here. Okay, we see where it's kind of centered there. I can grab this point. I can move it around, do stuff. Now watch what happens. I'm going to bring that same generic model pipe in. I'm going to go from the point to just one of these up here. Again, it knows the logic. I'm one here, and I'm a whole bunch here. If I grab this, do the repeat, it's going to go to all of them. It understands the logic that that was an individual point and that the rest of these are applying to it. I can still come back in, touch the surface, say, I want that to be 10. It starts to change. So I can still come back in and change the surface and then we'll adapt. Okay. This is why the time spent on that one pipe, making it be adaptable, we can actually come in here and say, well, look, I want to actually, I want to do the end offset uh, three feet and I want the pipe diameter to be one foot. Okay. That's the variation we want. What we want is to be able to model the logic and come back and edit the design over and over again. We're not remodeling, but putting the variables in so that we can change this and make better design decisions as we go, not remodel it. Right. Okay. That's all for today.